So welcome, welcome everyone to uh, today's uh, Lunch and Learn. I'm super excited uh, about this series. Um, we had a great first meeting and I'm sure that we're going to have an awesome second so meeting much, for Gary. joining today. We're really excited um, to get into the presentation. So without any further uh, delay, I'm going to hand it over uh, to Christina and Angelica to get us started. All right, let me share my screen over here. How's that look? Can you guys see that? Perfect. Mm -hmm. Wonderful. All right. So thank you um, so much for having us today. We really appreciate the opportunity to tell you a little bit about who we are and what we do. Um, so we are from the Freehold Area Health Department. Um, and I am Krista Moore. I am the public health nurse here at the department. Hi, yeah, I'm Angelica Espinal Garcia. I'm a health educator. And um, yeah, I, I echo Krista's words. Um, thanks for this opportunity. And um, so let's start off by telling a little bit about our, ourselves or our you know, department. We are the Freehold Area Health Department and we are a regional contractual actually local health department and we do provide public health uh, services to five municipalities. And so those are approximately, I would say 137,000 residents. And those municipalities are Freehold Township, Freehold Borough, Manalapan Township, Titan Falls Borough and Wall Township. So as we continue taking on more towns, so our internal uh, team also keeps growing. And as you can see, there are several uh, disciplines across the public health sector. And we have a one health officer, six, uh, what we call, uh, we know as inspectors, those are registered environmental health specialists, one nurse, which is Krista over here, one epidemiologist, two health educators, that includes myself, and also Kelsey. Kelsey was the uh, point of contact uh, for this presentation. Thanks for reaching out to Kelsey. Um, and also two administrative assistants. We are also very lucky to have uh, interns. We have an internship programs and there are so uh, great interns that help us with the services and, and programs that, that we offer here. Um, so I'm gonna turn it over to Chris that she's gonna go over uh, our services. All right, so you know what towns we cover and you know who our staff is now. So what exactly is it that we do? Um, so I'm going to give you kind of a, just a big, broad overview of our services, and then Angelic and I will both dive into some of the things that we um, work on here at the health department a little bit more in depth. The Freehold Area Health Department, or FAHD, or sometimes we call it FOD, um, is the local health department for the towns that Angelica mentioned before. So local health departments in general in the state of New Jersey are community-based public health service providers. Um, we are the frontline agency that is responsible for providing the essential public health services and ultimately protecting the health of our citizens. So what does that look like? So there's a few different bullet points on this slide. So first of all, we work to prevent disease in our communities. Um, we have an epidemiologist who responds to and investigates reports of communicable and contagious diseases in our communities. And then our environmental health staff, oh, we just okay. got a battery low signal. So I'm gonna keep talking and Helica's is gonna run and grab our cord real quick and fingers crossed that we don't lose you. Um, so our epidemiologist responds to and investigates communicable um, diseases in our municipalities. And then our environmental health staff also works to prevent disease. So they conduct restaurant inspections to make sure that the food that you're eating is safe and healthy. They also monitor air, soil, and water safety and address any environmental complaints that we receive. We often get calls from the public about concerns about their living conditions, um, the places that they live or spend time. So we look into all of those complaints that we receive. Second, our staff also provides um, the public with information on how to make healthy decisions in our own lives. So we work with the community to address common health issues like eating healthy, smoking cessation, hand washing, all those healthy behaviors that we want everybody to engage in on a normal basis. Third, oh, batteries. Oh. Okay. All right, technical difficulties, please stand by. Hopefully they'll get that cord and be able to hop back on. 
So maybe uh, Howard, let's talk about something uh, that we're going to talk about yeah. at the end. All right, I'll I'll go over the announcements really mm -hmm. quickly. Um, so there's a lot going on um, at the chamber. Um, so we have a bunch of events in the month of January. Um, this Friday we have the perk at the Marlboro Diner, which is always an awesome time um, and a great breakfast, one of my favorites. Um, Jan 16th, we have the Young Professionals uh, monthly group Zoom. Um, young Professionals last month had uh, a Kat, uh, a Catherine Smith, um, at, and she was awesome, that, um, Karen Smith from uh, Keller Williams. And that was a great presentation that she did. I really got a lot out of that. So those are really great meetings. Um, I know it's young professionals, but they encourage the old old fogies like me as well. Um, so I was able to uh, uh, I was able to to enjoy that meeting, and I would encourage you to do the same. Um, January twenty second, we have the installation ceremony and annual membership. Um, dinner that's a big event for us every year we hope you can join us uh for that and then last but not least and i'm really Howard, i just want to i just want to jump in for one second so at the installation uh ceremony and annual membership meeting we do have um two special guests coming we have um Michelle Sakurka, who's the CEO and president of New Jersey Business Industry Association. She will be our speaker. And we do have County Clerk Christine Hanlon doing the oath of office for our board. So uh, so if anybody would like to come out and um, and hear from them, that would be uh, that would be a bonus. So, yeah. Okay. And Michelle is awesome. I mean, I'm a member of NJBIA. She she's fanta a fantastic speaker. She does a great job. Um, they do a lot of things for the community, um, including advocacy, um, and they have actually uh, a big part of what they do is healthcare advocacy. So, you know, I'm connected to that um, and I'm looking forward to hearing her speak again. She was actually at a women in business meeting in the uh, early part of 23. And that's when I first met her. Right. So um, these meetings are meaningful. You can develop. Uh, meaningful relationships out of them and you never know what path it's going to bring you down. I did see our speakers were able to rejoin. I did have one more announcement. Um, let me see if we can, if you can get that present. Did they join? They were here. I did see them. Just want to make sure I'm that here. they're I hope you can still see us. Yep. I just want to make sure you're able to uh, share your screen if you can. And the last uh, item that I wanted to mention, January 24th um, at Adventure Crossing, that's going to be a really good time. Multi-chamber event. So there's going to be a lot of networking uh, going on there. And that's uh, going to be really exciting. Uh, for that event, there are uh, sponsorships available as well as... Um, tables, vendor tables. And I can tell you that because I bought a vendor table myself. So I hope to see uh, everyone there. And with no further ado, uh, I'll hand it back over uh, to you, Angelica and Christina. Sorry about that. We came down 15 minutes early to make sure we would have no technology issues. Um, and clearly we need to give ourselves more time next time. So, so sorry about that. I'm just no going to jump in to where I think we disconnected. So I was just talking a little bit about what we do as your local health department. Um, so I talked about how we provide information to help people make healthy decisions. Um, we also work to ensure that everybody has access to care. So we do provide some direct care services, which I will talk about in the next few slides, um, but we also have a wide network of community partners that we work with and refer to for needed health services. Our goal is really to work to reduce and eliminate barriers that prevent people from accessing that care that they need. And finally, we advocate and develop new policies to address new and existing public health issues. And we often do this in collaboration with our local and state partners. And we enforce existing public health laws and codes that are meant to keep you safe. So, so a little bit about some of the nursing services that we offer. Um, so I'm going to talk specifically about my nursing services, and I'm going to hand it off to Angelica, and she'll talk about the health education services. And I just want to 
preface what I say here with, um, I joined uh, the Freehold Area Health Department last year as their first full-time public health nurse. Prior to that, we contracted services out to other agencies. Um, but the exciting thing about that is we are still building out our nursing program and we're always open to new suggestions if there are specific needs or desires um, in the community um, that people are looking for. And many of the programs that we currently offer have actually been created in response to or influenced by requests from community members um, and professionals like yourself. So if you're aware of a need in the community, um, please share that with us because we're always open to kind of taking on new things. So chronic disease screening services is one of the nursing programs that we offer. We know that screenings are essential to maintaining health and we are able to offer screenings for blood pressure, diabetes, and we calculate people's body mass index, although I always kind of give a little disclaimer that that's not always the most useful tool, um, but we provide some education and information around that. The diabetes screening um, is really exciting. It's a hemoglobin A1C test, which if you're familiar with that, it gives you kind of a look back over the past three months as to how well your blood sugars have been controlled. And it's a, a frequent diagnostic tool that we use it as a screening tool to just help provide patients with information about where they're at with their health status and what are good next steps for them based on their results. Um, we have a machine that gives us a result in three minutes after a finger stick. So that's been pretty popular, especially with a lot of our seniors. Um, we do host clinics for these services. Um, at different events and organizations and any of the towns we serve. And while we offer these services, Angelica and Kelsey, our health educators, are often offering education about different health topics to align with the services that we're offering. So we kind of do a, a full service. You get the screening and you get the education. And the next service I'm going to talk about is our childhood lead testing program. So lead is toxic and causes many health problems in children, um, including damage to their brain, their nervous system, delayed developmental growth, learning behavioral problems, hearing speech problems, a whole host of problems that we don't want kids to have. Lead wasn't banned from paint until 1978. So any houses that were built before 1978 often have lead-based paint in them. And many of our homes in Freehold Borough especially were built before 1978. Lead's also found in lots of other sources, things like pottery, cultural candies, soil, recalled food products. I don't know if anybody is familiar with the large recall going on right now. Um, Wana Banana, I believe is the name of the brand. It's an applesauce. Their cinnamon was contaminated with lead in, in significant amounts. So far, there have been 200 children nationally who have been identified with lead poisoning as a result of eating that applesauce. So lead is still here. Some people think it's not a problem anymore. It is. Um, in New Jersey specifically, all children should be tested for lead at ages one and two. But unfortunately, we know, we know that many children are not screened according to that schedule. So what we do is we offer screening services ourselves, And you can see just about the cutest little girl you've ever seen in this picture here getting her finger sticked for her lead test. Um, and then in addition to that, when we have um, children in our municipalities who have elevated lead levels, we do two things. First is we offer nursing case management where myself or a nurse that we contract with will actually go out to the home and work with the families to educate them on causes of lead and how to bring those lead levels down. And then our environmental specialists who Angelica told you about will actually go out to the house as well and they will test for lead in the home to see if we can find where is that lead poisoning coming from. And we also offer a lot of vaccination programs. So we regularly offer flu and COVID vaccines in addition to other vaccines as well. And we have a variety of ways that we do this to try to make it low barrier and easy to access. So we do clinics. We just are kind of coming down off of our flu vaccine clinic season. Um, we do lots of clinics at senior centers, community-based um, locations, other locations, just to make it more accessible to people. We do offer a homebound vaccination program. So if there is somebody who cannot physically leave their home for any reason, we will go and we will vaccinate them in their home. And then we also have a program through the state health department where we are able to offer vaccines for free to people who do not have health insurance or to people whose insurance does not cover the cost of the vaccine. And that is a, a program specific to adults. Um, I also just want to make a quick plug. I know it's January, um, but if any of you haven't gotten your flu shot yet, it's not too late. We went into a high level of activity in this region 
about two or three weeks ago and it's continuing. Um, so if you haven't, please come talk to me. I'd be happy to give you a flu vaccine. We also do um, a lot of education programs and I do them often in conjunction with our health educators. So one program we do is a fall prevention for seniors. This was a program that we put together at the request of the Freehold Township Senior Center. We know that falls are a leading cause of fatal and non-fatal injuries in older adults and that most falls are actually preventable. So we provided a presentation on what causes falls, who is at risk for them, and then how do we prevent them from happening. This was a really fun presentation. It was a lot of interactive activities. We had them doing um, a lot of standing and sitting and kind of assessing their own stability and mobility. Um, we had Angelica demonstrate how to get up after a fall, which she did very gracefully. Um, we had about 20 people there. So this is a program that we have in existence, but we can also create other programs if there are specific topics people are looking for. And the last thing I just want to talk about is our collaboration. Um, one of our strengths is our frequent, frequent work and collaboration with other partners, which makes us a great resource. So if there's something you're looking for and we're not the experts, we'll find those experts for you. So for example, one of our senior apartment complexes had actually reached out to us they were looking for information for their residents about end of life care planning, um, specifically about like filling out advanced directives and post forms or practitioner orders for life sustaining treatment. Um, we knew about it, but we weren't really the experts in that field, but we were able to use our connections to secure a speaker from Hackensack Meridian Health's palliative care program. She was wonderful, Tracy Grafton. She provided a presentation called Advanced Care Planning, A Gift to Your Loved Ones. Um, and after that, she actually sat with people one-on-one -on -one and she helped them start filling out some of those forms. So again, like I said, if, if there's a need you have, even if we aren't the ones who are maybe the right fit for it, we're always happy to work to find that person who is the right fit for you. And I'm gonna pass it back to Angelica and she's gonna talk to you more about our health education services. Hi again. Um, so, I'm going to sound biased here, but I love health education. Um, I, I got to say, uh, hopefully some of you can, you know, resonate with me in that sense. But um, I got to say that because health education occurs, you know, throughout all health department programs. And we actually focus on providing education and health promotion services to help the public may, make informed decisions, right, about their health. And also all the health education programs and activity help the community in general, right, to achieve a healthier uh, health uh, lifestyles and also promote healthy behaviors. So like I said earlier, uh, in our department, there's only two of us, uh, Kelsey and myself, providing these services. So we work really hard and, and we make sure that we cover at least essential components. And those are the ones, the ones that you see on the screen. You know, we make sure that we do offer educational sessions, uh, some programs There are more structured programs that we're gonna go into it and some trainings and some of the empowerment initiatives for the community. And we also do community outreach. So next up, I'm gonna give you some of the examples, some of the activities that would actually you know, align with those components. Um, for the educational sessions, so we do actually do, we do community assessment. So we listen to other community members. We do go out and we survey. We ask them you know, what topics they do prefer and we go by them. So that's one of the, the way that we go. And another one is we follow national health observances. Uh, we come out every month and go to uh, different places. We do provide in-person virtually, and also we can also do it in one-on-one -on -one basis and, and in groups. Um, also like Krista already mentioned, we align with their you know, nursing services and we complement each other in, in that sense. Um, Next up would be, like I said, more structure and evidence-based programs. And I know I saw Andrea from, from SCAN because Andrea and Kelsey have been working together. And this is a really great program. Uh, it's a six-week program. And I know it has more requirements to it. Um, um, if you have any questions about this program, so, you know, Andrea's here. She's the one that's going to answer those questions. But um, basically, you know, it has to be Imam Khani, age 60 and older, uh, with at least one of the mental or physical chronic health conditions. And I know focuses on teaching participants and new skills for managing their chronic health conditions. 
uh, help and navigate the healthcare system, building action plan, making you know problem solving decisions and, and stuff like that. Uh, I heard really good feedback about it. Every time that Kelsey comes back to the office from it, it's very excited about it. So it's a really good program. Um, empowerment. Um, Krista also mentioned that we are really strong on collaboration and, and partnership, as you already as already uh, heard about, like working with SCAN. Uh, locally, there's a um, coalition, there's a health coalition, it's called Neighborhood Connection of Health. So they also have some programs in the community. So as a local health department, we help them with some logistic support. I do provide some training with the community members. So these are residents-led programs like the um, Intergenerational Community Council. Those are volunteers that come, they work together, and they go through a um, six-month uh, leadership program for all ages. So I do teach that training and they come together, they come up with their own needs assessment and their own project. You can see some of the pictures uh, right there that actually reflect one of the projects that they planned and implemented and it's going on right now. That's the Inner Generational Community Kitchen. Um, that was the first generation. Right now, we are in the process of welcoming a second generation of uh, residents of all ages. Uh, it runs from middle schoolers up to anyone, older adults from their 60s, 70s, and 80s. Uh, actually, our oldest 78 year old. So if you happen to know um, anyone, any older adults that would be interested in joining this council, uh, please reach out. We, we actually still, we're actually still like, you know, welcoming anyone that would actually um, be interested in joining this group. That's the Intergenerational Community Council. We also have in Freehold another group that is called Tenant Association. They are residents that actually assess the needs, the housing needs, and they look for their own decision making, their own issues, so they can, you know, uh, educate the whole community about those issues and also look for the solutions themselves. So, so they advocate for their rights and also they advocate for their own benefits through education and also uh, through policy changes. So that's community empowerment. And one of the approach that we use is called community uh, building capacity. Uh, the other one will be trainings. Uh, so for trainings, the two ones that we are actually, you know, offering, recruiting, and also uh, going out and, and offering to our community members or our partners, that would be the CPR, uh, family and friends, that would be one of them. Uh, this is a non-certification course that's ideal for any community members, for uh, for families, for parents, grandparents, anyone that want to learn how to save a life. And, and they wouldn't get a um, certification, but they would get a, a completion certificate at the end of it. Uh, the other one is called is it Heart Saver. Heart Saver, uh, that would be for uh, professional still not medical professional but we need a certificate uh certification rather uh qpr suicide prevention that's an hour and a half uh suicide prevention training it could be offered virtually or in person and like it says you know on the screen it actually help you recognize sorry just reading here oh yeah so how to learn to recognize the warning signs as well. Sorry, I moved the screen. Let me recognize that warning signs of suicide among youth populations and, and how to offer the hope to a person in crisis. So that's another uh, really good training uh, that we offer, like I say, to the community. And the next one would be community outreach. We do come to events. If you happen to have any events, we are happy to come over and we table and we provide educational information and also we you know, provide ourselves as a resource to our community, our community members. So that's all I have as far as in health education you know, services. And the next up in the screen, we have our contact information. If you have any questions, uh, please feel free to reach out. Um, I think we have time to take a few questions, if that's okay. Um, I had one question um, and that I've noticed, especially in my 
uh, with my clients and my caregivers is kind of the surge in COVID again. Could you like talk a little bit about um, what you guys are doing for COVID and, and what you see, lo- what, are you, what are you seeing locally? Yeah, I can start with that. And then Angelica, if there's anything you want to add in, I mean, so we're, we're in the height of respiratory virus season right now. Like I mentioned a few minutes ago, our, our flu activity level just went to high in Monmouth County about two or three weeks ago. I think we entered that COVID's a little harder to track nowadays, and that's because with the end of the um, public health emergency, a lot of the required reporting ended, and we know most people who are testing at this point are testing at home, so those things aren't getting required. So it's a little bit harder to kind of quantify what's going on with COVID in our communities. Um, What we really look at now is hospital admissions. That's like our best indicator. And while they're still happening, um, based on the data we have in the the current rates of hospital admissions, the COVID level isn't exceptionally high at the moment, but it's it's out there, it's circulating. RSV is also circulating at the moment and that we are seeing an increase in as well right now. So really, you know, the primary goals for us right now are to give people the tools that they need to protect themselves. And the first one is going to be vaccination. Um, This is the first year that we do have vaccines available for those three heavy hitters, flu, RSV, and COVID vaccine. Um, And like I mentioned, it's not too late for any of them. So we encourage everybody, but especially those who are at risk, so older adults and adults with chronic health conditions, to get those vaccines. And if they have questions, to talk to their healthcare providers to see which vaccines are right for them. Um, And that is something we can help with. So we do have flu and COVID vaccine available. RSV, we're looking at getting a small supply for people who are having a hard time finding it otherwise. So I'm hopeful that we'll have that soon as well. The rest of it is really, honestly, we're promoting those kind of back to basics, right? Hand washing, stay home when you're sick, Masks is always a personal choice, but if you are somebody who is at higher risk um, or you live or spend time with somebody who is at higher risk, I think thinking about wearing a mask when you're in certain situations is certainly, you know, a worthy strategy right now as well. Um, We don't do the individual case investigations or contact tracing for COVID like we used to back at the beginning, right, when we were calling every single person who was sick and then trying to identify who they might have exposed. We're not doing that anymore because realistically, we don't have the capacity and we don't do it for other respiratory viruses. Um, And we're kind of integrating COVID into this, this normal respiratory virus that we see every year. What we do on our end, though, is we work primarily with our long-term care facilities and our schools to help them manage and control COVID outbreaks. We are still seeing COVID-19 spreading in our long-term care facilities. So Brett, our epidemiologist here, spends a lot of time working with those facilities to try to identify how is it transmitting within their facilities and to stop and break that transmission by implementing infection control measures. And same thing with our schools, right? We talk to our schools very frequently because we know that they are breeding grounds for germs. Um, They always have been and they probably always will be. Um, But we work with our schools a lot when they're seeing clusters of illness, whether it be COVID flu or something else, um, to identify what's happening, try to figure out why is it spreading and what measures we need to take to stop that spread. So as the local health department, that's kind of our role um, with those illnesses right now. And I hope that that answered your question. Yeah, no, that was that was a great a uh, bit of information. Uh, just one quick follow up: the flu vaccinations that you offer, uh, do, does the folks have to come in to your office in order to get that, or what about for folks that really can't get out of their house? Do you have anything for them? We come to you. So we oh. have a full homebound vaccination program, um, and and we don't we don't question people, right? If you call us and say, I need you to come to my home because I can't get vaccinated otherwise, we come. Um, No, I just do want to clarify, we can only offer that service to the people who live in our municipality. So Freehold Borough, Freehold Township, Manalip and Wall and Titton Falls. If you have a resident who lives in another municipality in Monmouth County, we would direct you to their local health department. And we can always help you figure out who that is. Most of the local health departments do have some sort of homebound vaccination program in place. Um, So we are always happy to go to the home 
flu and COVID we have in stock, other vaccines we get requests for, and we kind of handle those on a one-off basis. So like right now we're looking to purchase some shingles vaccine because we're getting some requests for some older adults who need shingles vaccine and can't get out of their house to get it. So when those requests come in, we deal with those. And if we need to buy the vaccine, oftentimes we just buy the vaccine and we take it to them. Um, we do also have a program in place for people who don't have health insurance. What we started to see this year, again, with the end of the public health emergency and the federal government is no longer buying COVID vaccine. People are getting charged for it now where they weren't before. And we had a handful of people who attempted to get a COVID vaccine for themselves at a local pharmacy, and they were being charged really obscene amounts, like $200, $300 for one vaccine. We tell them, do not pay that. Call us come to our office, or if we need to meet you somewhere, we'll meet you somewhere, and we will provide that COVID vaccine to you for free. Um, same thing with all of our homebound vaccinations. We do not charge for them. We will collect insurance information, but there is no out-of-pocket cost for any of the vaccines that we provide. That's amazing. Just, yeah, I just wanted to add to everything that you covered pretty much everything, but we, we do focus a lot on health equity. And as I mentioned earlier, we also listen a lot to our community members. And what Krista has mentioned already, uh, going out to the clinics, since we have a lot of like partners, you know, collaborations. So we do make not only the vaccines, but also the home test accessible mm -hmm. to our community members. So we make like the clinics um, accessible and also go to trusted sources, you know, to the residents. We're talking about like uh, how to reach populations like the Hispanic, so make it a, a, an accessible, also available, the language and all those barriers that we already know, we take care of that. And as well as the insurance coverage that Krista has, has mentioned already. So uh, homebound and all those kind of things. So those are the things that, that we have worked, you know, towards COVID vaccination. Um, as some of the, uh, like I mentioned, the local coalitions and, and another one is Casa Frigo and other, we do provide home tests by hundreds. So mm -hmm. people can come to the places to pick them up, you know, as far as health education goes for COVID protocols and all that. And they know we use like, communication channels that they feel comfortable with and they know what the protocols how to follow because we initially remember we were the ones who were doing the contact tracing the um, case investigation so they were initially educated they, they know we are like the point, point contact and they know how to reach back to us that's awesome anyone else have any questions um i do <laughs> I couldn't find uh, where to raise my hand. Go for you guys it. Do amazing, you guys do amazing work. Um, uh, I guess one of the questions, uh, you know, from Center State, we have two community health workers here. Um, and Christina, you're just one person to do all these vaccines. Do you have assistance or can you use some of our staff at some of your events where we could um, help out with staffing? I mean, you have the resources, but we do have um, nurses here that could go out. And I think we've been working closely with you already, but um, any additional events that you have that we could attend, um, we'd be happy to help out. Yes, thank you so much for that. I appreciate that. Yes, I, I am only one person. Since I can only do so much. Um, we do um, have an existing contract with BNA, so they are able to offer some staffing okay. support at times, which we are extremely grateful for. But yes, we also have been working with Center State. Um, I've been out with Edgar and Angelica was there once um, yeah. at the 612 store at, at 630 in the morning giving vaccines yeah. um, the past few months. That's, that's been a great experience. Yeah. Um, so we're yes. planning, we're planning on some, of, you know, winter time is tough. Um, but we still know that um, Edgar's great because he can work with the Hispanic population also. Um, but uh, we we are going to plan some more events over the in the borough over the you know next couple of months into March, and uh, you know we'll reach out to you and and hopefully we can collaborate with you because we don't have the vaccine, so we don't yeah. have the resources. We have the people. No, that that's great. And thank you so much for the offer. And yeah, the continued partnership. Absolutely. That that's kind of um it's really essential to us here. We're a fairly small department. So without the the partnership and the collaboration, um, this would be very hard to do. So yes, please keep us in the loop as you um plan things in the coming months. I actually need to get back to Edgar too, because I know he had a few more dates scheduled at the 612 store. Um, so yeah. that is my okay. radar. But yeah, keep us in the loop as you plan more things and we can do the same. And when there's opportunities um to partner up, let's do it. Okay, yeah. excellent. That, Thank you so much. 
that's awesome. I mean, that that's incredible. That's the strength of the chamber. What I would say there also is that, you know, what I think is the challenge is on the communication side. How do we get that message out to the broader public? And I would tell you that that's where we can help. That's where the chamber, I think, could play a role in that collaboration, right, is to broadcast that is awareness through programs like this so that people can have uh, access. Obviously, for me, being in the senior space, that's, you know, something that's near and dear to me for my, not only my caregivers, but also for my patients, right? So I think there's a lot of uh, connectivity, but I would just say, in general, let the chamber be a mouthpiece to amplify those those messages so that we can get them to the right people so that more people can have access to this. Because I think what you're doing is incredible and it, it, it's an incredible value to the community. So we're so appreciative of that, absolutely. Um, any more questions? I think we can squeeze in maybe one more. So um, I just wanted to know if you are partnering at all with Community Affairs and Resource Center for anything, because I know that they do lead screening as well, and um, they, um, they've been doing it for a while. Uh, are you in connection with them? We, yeah, do you want to take that one? You can go ahead with the lead if you want. We, yes, we um, are very familiar with them. We, we work with them frequently. We're also often at the same event. So we've gotten to know them over the years and we do, um, so they do lead testing as well. Um, they have a much broader catchment area than we do because we're restricted to the municipalities we serve, whereas they are able to go, I know all over Monmouth County um, and probably other places where we work with them a lot when it comes to lead, especially is we refer a lot of families to their lead remediation and abatement programs. Um, that's been a great service. I know that our environmental inspectors work with them and refer to them often. So yes, have been have been grateful to, to them for their support. Sweet. Yeah, no, yeah I was going to say that. Them. Yeah, as a um, you know, health educator, we also do a lot of uh, referrals. We mm -hmm. are, you know, yeah. um, work on that. And, and CARC has been a really great asset as well because they That's do awesome. bring a lot of, and they just put over freehold. Yeah, they, they just, just did offices. a ribbon cutting for them oh, over yeah, the for, summer. So in four years, I would say, for about 10 years, we've been working together. Uh, nice. I love the fact that you guys are already connected because I was going to recommend you do get connected if you weren't uh because i figured they could help you out yeah great that's I wonderful thank you Thanks. yeah i actually owe them a, a big thank you um i was an adult nurse for most of my life i never did pediatrics um and when i came here and realized i was going to be testing children for lead um that was new to me and actually spent some time with some of their nurses kind of working on that skill a little bit um I, I know that the time for questions is coming to an end but i just wanted to actually ask a quick question myself because this seems like such an excellent group and to your point, Howard, about, <laughs> about being um, kind of a, a resource and, and somebody who can put that message out there. Um, this is obviously the first meeting that we've attended, but it, would there be value to us to continue to attend, not as um, presenters, but just as participants to kind of no, Absolutely. And I would welcome you to join us in the health and wellness committee as well. Um, where there's lots of things that are in the works um, with all of our partners that are on this call. So um, yes, absolutely. And I, you know, I think that just in general, right, as we go through seasons, um, as things come up, this uh, type of collaboration, I think, could present a lot of opportunities for everyone who's involved. So we, I would encourage you, I welcome you, um, and uh, please use us uh, to help amplify. So, you know, we, we definitely want to do that 100%. And I want to be a good partner uh, for you as, as well uh, as the co-chair. I know that Susan wasn't here today, um, but you know that Brookdale is also another uh, partner. They just opened up their health and wellness center and they're doing amazing things for the community as well. So I just see a lot of connectivity there. Center state obviously is so is core to that. Um, and, you know, now that we've, we've had this opportunity to connect, let's develop that relationship. So much appreciated and really sincere. Thank you for your time 
today. Um, this definitely opened up my eyes to a lot of the work that you do. And, you know, I see uh, a potential opportunity, not only for my clients, but a lot of my caregivers that are tend to be underserved, right, could benefit from the things that you guys are doing. So really appreciate you coming on today and giving us a little bit of education. So thank you so much, uh, Angelica and uh, Krista. This was great. I put my contact information